welcome back everyone uh, in this lecture uh, i will talk about uh, group acting on a set okay so this is very important actually notion and uh, tool okay so this group action is actually you can see everywhere so for example in topology geometry as well as in combinatorics okay so so mostly actually we will use uh, this uh, group action in order to prove many interesting results uh, about uh, group itself okay by using various uh, action of group on itself okay so from the combinatorial point of view when some group is acting on a set okay then that uh, group possesses lots of symmetries using those symmetries one can actually uh, understand the set the underlying set in a better way for example from the combinatorial point of view let us say we are interested in counting the number of elements in the in a given set okay suppose uh, we can find a group that is naturally acting on that set okay and then that action is let us say transitive action and so on. So, then using this information and information about the groups one will be able to count the number of elements in the set okay. So, we I will demonstrate all these things uh, using some examples okay. But before that uh, let us begin with uh, notion of group action and then let us get familiar with this uh, idea okay. It is very very powerful idea okay. So, somewhat it uh, uniformizes all the things that you have seen so far. So, let us uh, begin okay. Let us fix some notation. So, as before so we always say uh, uh, denote G by a group okay. So, what we are trying to understand? So, we want to say that this group is acting on a set okay. So, you may wonder okay, what is the motivation behind this okay. Let me start with one example. So, then it becomes clear what we are indeed talking about. So, let us take uh, somewhat uh, geometrical example okay. Let us take R n. So, which is n dimensional space okay. So, one can treat it as okay for example, we can take a standard inner product and then that will give you distance. So, this can be viewed as Euclidean space okay. So, now what one can do one can look at all possible invertible maps from R n to R n okay. So, that is denoted by G L on G L of R n. So, this is the set of all invertible linear maps okay from R n on to R n okay. So, and then this is a group. So, we can say that any element of this group is indeed acting on this R n okay. So, that means given any element G in this G L of R n. So, you have a map associated map from R n to R n. So, what it is? It is actually sending some vector to its image okay. That means, this given element okay G in G L of R n. So, it is acting on R n as invertible linear map okay. So, because here I started with uh, linear structure. So, we are actually taking this invertible linear maps and we are looking at uh, the action that is that possess more properties. But from the purely set theoretic point of view okay if we want to understand the group this group acting on this R n okay then we may not know what is linear maps and so on. But without that if you think about it what this G indeed does this G is simply a bijective map from R n to R n okay. The important thing is from purely set theoretic point of view G is bijective map okay. So, this is the level of abstraction that we will actually 
look at it when we actually go to group action for the general group G acting on subset capital X. Okay. So, note that so in this example itself what is the meaning of this G L of R n acting on R n. So, that means given element G in G L of R n we have a natural map from R n to R n. Not only that when you compose two maps in G L of R n that actually somewhat reflected here on the right side as well. Okay. So, let me just uh, just to make things uh, somewhat uh, more uh, uh, easy. So, let us denote the image okay, as let us say some T G. So, T G is the linear map that we are associating with uh, this G. Okay. So, G is like a matrix okay, and given vector v you are associating g v. So, that is your map t g of v. So, t g of v is just given by g. So, now if you think about it, so you have g 1, so that is map to t g 1 and then you have g 2 which is map to t g 2. Okay. So, then we can compose these two maps on the left side. So, because this is all happening inside g l of R n. Okay. So, then what you expect you naturally expect when you look at the image of this T g 1 T g 2. So, that should be just the product of T g 1 T g 2. So, which is just a composition. Okay. So, this is the meaning of this group is acting on this set capital X. Okay. So, the group law also should be preserved. Okay. So, various textbooks actually gives various definition. Uh, personally, I like this definition. Okay. So, let me give you the definition. So, so, the definition of a group action. So, let us start with G being a group, X being a non-empty set. Okay. So, then we want to say that each element of a group is acting on X. Okay. So, that means because it is actually coming from the group. Okay. So, it should be naturally mapped to okay, some map on x to x okay, which must be invertible. Okay. That is because uh, somewhat group law should be preserved with that association. So, if you think about this g goes to t g, if it is a group homomorphism that is what uh, we are demanding here that will tell you immediately this T g must be an invertible map. Okay. So, that is why we demand this, this definition. So, we say g is acting on this capital X via let us say some map via tau if tau is a group homomorphism from G to S x. Okay. So, in this situation we say that this G is acting on this capital X. Okay. Each element of the group defines a function from x to x which is a bijective function. So, recall what is s x? s x is nothing but the set of all bijective function from x to x. Okay. So, let us recall the definition. Okay. So, g acting on x via this tau. So, then you, you have tau is a map from g to s x. So, where recall s x is nothing but those maps okay, f from x to x such that f is a bijective map. Okay, this is set of all bijective maps and s x is a group with respect to the composition okay, given x to x f 
and then x 2 x g one can talk about f composition g ok. So, with respect to that we have multiplication the composition of maps gives you the uh, multiplication among x uh, among these uh, bijective maps. So, this is your group law ok. So, that means what that means so, whenever you actually look at so, maybe I, I would have had the different thing. So, the multiplication so, let us say is actually given by f star g this is the multiplication I simply take the composition ok. So, both are make sense. So, this is g this is f. So, this is your group multiplication in S, Sx ok. So, let us unreveal all the things that are encoded in this one definition. So, this is just being group homomorphism ok. So, what is the meaning of that let us rewrite things ok. So, given each element g in capital G we have this tau g which is a map from x to x. So, this is a bijective map ok. So, first of all so that is the first thing it is a map tau is a map from g to s x. So, that means given each element you have this tau g. So, now if you think about it the tau identity ok because tau is being a group homomorphism tau identity must be identity function on x because identity function on capital X is the identity element in S x ok. So, 1 x of small x is defined to be x for all x in capital X ok. So, now if you take any tau of g inverse ok tau g inverse which is tau of g inverse. So, from the group homomorphism property we know that the inverse of an element is mapped to the inverse of the mapped element. So, that means so this is tau of g inverse so which is exactly tau g inverse inside your S x the inverse map associated with tau g is what image of tau g inverse. And these are all like immediate uh, from the group homomorphism and the definition of group homomorphism tells if you take g 1 g 2 tau of g 1 g 2 then that must be the composition tau g 1 tau g 2 inside S x ok. So, this is just uh, possessed in this uh, this information inside uh, tau being a homomorphism from g to s x ok. So, in that case we say that g is acting on this capital X via this tau ok. So, if you think about it what we are indeed doing ok. So, you have this set capital X ok and then you have this group g and then you pick some element g in capital G. So, then this tau g gives you map from capital X to capital X it is a bijective map we can also call it a permutation ok. So, tau g is a permutation of capital X. So, then what this does if you take some small x ok. So, this small x is mapped to tau g of x under this tau g. So, this is just simply each element of the group is a simply permuting all the elements of capital X. And of course, group has this group law ok the compositions are there or the product is there on the groups that product should actually obey when you take the compositions ok. The tau g 1 g 2 should be same as tau g 1 composition tau g 2. Okay, because of this you can see that tau identity should be the identity element of x and tau g inverse should be tau g of inverse 
okay, all these things should be satisfied. So, in some books, so these details will be written in detail and then they call that as a actually group action. Okay. Let us see that definition as well. Okay. I will leave it to you to verify those two definitions actually are equivalent. So, this is our first definition. Okay. Let us call this as a first definition of group acting on x via tau. Okay. So, here is the second definition. So, the second definition again motivated from the first definition. Okay. So, if you think about it, so given element G and given element in capital X, okay, so you can associate one element in capital X. So you take some G and then you take some X and then you can send this to tau G of X okay, if tau is there. So that means you can think group action as, as a map from G cross X to X satisfying some properties. So, let us write down what it is. Okay. So, when you say G acts on X, let us say via now some pi, where pi is a map from G cross X to X, which is given by G comma X goes to pi of g comma x okay we say this we say g acts on x via pi if the following satisfy if the following conditions or satisfied. Okay. So, what are all the condition? So, those condition can be worked out using okay, the original first definition, definition 1. Okay. For example, let us let us see what happens. If you take identity and then x, so where it should be mapped? It should be mapped to tau identity of x, tau identity of x, but that is exactly 1 x of x which is just x. So, that means, so that I can put it as a first definition pi of identity x is x for all x in capital X. Okay. So, then the second condition when you take the group law g1, g2 map to g1, g2 of x. So, that is mapped to tau g1 g2 of x, okay, but what it is exactly? It is exactly equal to tau g1 composition tau g2 of x. Okay. So, that is exactly the composition, so which is tau g1 of tau g2 of x. Okay. So, this is what it says. So, this is something we want to rewrite in terms of this pi. So, let us see how we can, can write this pi of now you take g1, g2, comma x. So, this should be what? First you apply pi of g2, comma x. So, that is tau g2 of x. This is an element in capital X. Okay? So, then you apply pi of g1 on this. Okay, that is what it says. So, pi of g1 comma pi of g2 comma x. So, this is first element in capital X and then you apply g1 at again. Okay. So, these two properties should be satisfied. So, from this you can see that so the corresponding map okay, g goes to tau g. So, now what will be the tau? Okay, given now pi so we can define we can define tau as follows from g to sx so how one can define this so this is tau of g to be just pi g comma dash 
what is the meaning of that? That means if you take okay, this is our tau g sorry, this is our tau g. So, tau g of x you define to be pi of g comma x. Okay. So, you can also add this another condition like pi of g inverse comma x. So, that is going to be okay. So, that is tau g inverse. So, tau g inverse of x. Okay. So, maybe that is inbuilt already in this. So, we do not need to worry about it. Okay. To verify these things, okay. so given pi So, given pi we can define this tau as follows. So, then we need to verify that. So, definition 2 implies definition 1 for that purpose we need to verify tau is indeed a group homomorphism. Okay. So, let us check. So, what we are verifying? We are verifying now definition 2 implies definition 1. Okay. So, from given pi you define this tau which is a map from g to s x. Okay. So, to say that it is a map from indeed g to s x we need to verify this pi g dash which is a map from x to x is indeed a bijection. Okay. So, if you can verify this then you are you are in, in good shape. So, let us try to verify this. Okay. So, what happens when you take pi g comma dash from x to x? So, this is going to map x to pi g comma x. So, now what is given? Given is the pi is given. So, g is acting on x via this pi where pi is a map from g cross capital X to x satisfying these conditions. Okay only these two conditions. So, from this we want to say that the map that we define tau uh, which maps uh, g to okay, this tau g which is pi of g comma dash that is actually a uh, group action using the first definition. For that purpose first we need to verify this x goes to pi g of x is a bijective map. So, it is a map that is very clear why it is bijective. So, if you think about it so, pi g g inverse comma x is going to be pi g comma pi g inverse comma x. Okay. But pi g g inverse x is nothing but pi of e identity, identity x which is just 1 x of x which is x. Okay. So, that tells us that pi g comma pi g inverse comma x is nothing but x. Okay. So, given x you can take y to be this pi g inverse comma x. So, that is your inverse image. Okay. So, given x in capital X take y to be pi g inverse comma x. So, then it is clear that pi g comma y is x. Okay, that proves that pi g comma dash is indeed surjective. Okay, so, this proves that pi g comma dash is a surjective map. Why it is injective? So, it is injective again uh, from the same reason. Okay, let us say you have two images are equal pi of g comma x1 equal to pi of g comma x2. Okay. So, now if you plug in this inside pi of g inverse of g comma x1. So, using the well definers of pi you get this is same as pi of g inverse of pi of g comma x2. But what it is? So, if you go back to the original definition. So, pi of if you take g1 here, g2 here then it has to be the composition. 
okay that is the definition. So, if you go back to the definition, so here it is whenever you take g1 here, g2 here you have to compose here g1, g2. So, that tells us that okay this pi of this side left hand side is g1 inverse g comma x1. Similarly, this is pi of g, in, g inverse g comma x2. But what is this? This is pi of E x1 which is x1 and this is pi of E x2 which is x2. So, that proves that x1 equal to x2. Okay. So, this is what we wanted to prove. If you take the images are equal pi of g comma x1 is same as pi of g x2 then we want to prove the pre images are equal. So, that proves pi is injective. We already proved pi is surjective and here now we proved pi is injective. So, that proves that pi, pi of x g comma dash is pi of g comma dash is surjective map uh, sorry pijective map. So, that means the tau that we defined using pi. So, let me call it okay, maybe tau upper pi which is a map from g to s x given by tau pi of g is just pi of g comma dash. Okay. It is a well defined map. Okay. Now, I will leave it to you to check. Okay. This is something you can check directly from again the definition that uh, this tau pi is indeed a group homomorphism. So, that means tau pi of g 1 g 2 should be same as tau pi of g 1 composition tau pi of g 2 and again that will come from the definition of pi. Okay. So, that means from definition 2 one can get definition 1. And I will leave it to you to check again from definition 1 you can get the definition 2 by defining pi to be this. So, this is the pi tau let us say. So, given tau you define this pi tau to be g x goes to tau g of x then that will define you actually uh, the group action that is listed here. Okay. So, many books actually gives this uh, pi definition the second second definition for the group action okay uh, but uh, indeed uh, i would recommend you to remember this definition this is somewhat more natural definition so each element of the group is acting as a bijective map on capital x and of course that uh, association g goes to tau g should preserve the group uh, loss okay so then you say that this group is acting on capital X. So, because we are not having any other structure, we want to talk about group action in more abstract way. So, that is why we are demanding only the g goes to tau g where tau g is being just a set theoretic bijective map. Okay. Of course, when you depending upon so what you do if you are in uh, topology, geometry and so on. So, you demand more on this association. For example, you can take in uh, topology that uh, tau g are all being continuous maps or homeomorphisms and so on. Okay. Or if you are in linear algebra, you can demand it to be all linear invertible maps. But anyway, so such situations can arise later. But here in the more abstract way, we just say that group g is acting on x. If there is, exists a group homomorphism, uh, uh, tau from g to s x. Of course, if you if you want to say just g is acting on x, so then we can hide this tau. We can simply say that there exists tau such like this. Okay. So in practice, what we do, we don't indeed use this tau often. Okay. Again, we will use this the shorthand notation. So what is this shorthand notation? we suppress this tau. Okay. We say that there is this action from g to okay, action of g on x. Then instead of writing, so given x in x, 
So, the image of tau g of x okay, that is sometimes written as g dot x. Okay. So, this is the shorthand notation. So, this is very often used, okay, but this should not be confused with uh, group multiplication. So, warning okay, this g dot x should not be confused with group multiplication. because there is no group multiplication because this x is coming from capital X and g is coming from capital G. Okay? They are two different sets, okay? but we are looking at uh, the corresponding map tau g which is acting on capital X. So, we are looking at the image of x under this tau g which we just denoted by g dot x. Okay, so, I will stop here and then uh, we will uh, continue with uh, group action in the next class. Thank you.